Lynn Witten was sexually abused by a close family member from the age of five. The abuse continued throughout her childhood and into her early 20s. Her attempts to share what was happening met on deaf ears, and so she determined to save enough money as soon as she could, leave home, and make her own way in the world. Yet despite her dream to leave, when the time came, she was terrified. The hardest decision to actually leave that comfort of, of my home. And, and yes, I, I, I craved the, the freedom, I craved the feeling of safety, but leaving home was hard. Sexual abuse does not only result in the terror of the other, of other people and relationships, but the whole world does not feel like a safe space. It was an environment that I knew, it was a culture that I knew, and it was, it was very, very hard to, to actually walk out. Finally, at the age of 21, Lynn was legally able to leave home. A few years later, she married the man who'd be the father of her first child. I met Sean when I was still at school. And it was, a, it was an amazing feeling because he was the first person that told me that I was beautiful. I think back now about the absolute agony I must have put him through being involved or marrying somebody that couldn't connect intimately, that couldn't, that couldn't give of myself physically. I could give from, from the head. I could, I could think to give, I could think to love, and I couldn't, I couldn't feel it. And the, the real breakdown came when Stephanie was born, because I had the physical ability to, to love her and to show love, and he could see the difference. And, and it broke his heart. I left for the second time in my life. I packed up, and this time had had Stephanie, and and so it, it was it was harder because now it was taking her away from from the environment that she knew, from a father that loved her. So when you had Stephanie, your first child, what did it feel like to love? It hurt. It hurt because not loving also meant you didn't get hurt, and opening yourself up to love means you're opening yourself up to get hurt. And as she grew up, every single time she looked at me, I knew that she loved me completely. With all my faults, all my flaws, she just saw mommy. Sean and Lynn parted ways but news that he'd been murdered in a senseless, random attack shook Lynn's world. Sean's death, though horrific and tragic, was the catalyst that helped Lynn see the world in a different way. It prepared her to leap into a whole new life. And as the sun was coming up that morning, I just realized that the world doesn't stop. That something as heartbreaking as somebody at the age of 27 my child's father, that was never ever going to be part of her life again, was gone forever and the world did not stop. The sun didn't even stop for five seconds from rising. That everything needs to go on and that I needed to go on for Stephanie's sake. And you took that leap of faith? It was a huge leap of faith. What was that leap of faith? That I was going to start living. That Stephanie and I was going to start experiencing life. And the first thing I needed to do was to start loving myself. Until they've gone for, I think, professional help, they cannot get to a position of wholeness and they cannot get to a position when they can really say that they've survived the trauma. It leaves an indelible, effects on one's psyche. One's not the same person. She came in here with her shattered sense of self and it was held very fragilely by a form of hope. 
and hope that we together on a journey would find a resolution that would enable her to engage with the world in a completely different way. And that is something about the transformation for me of somebody going from victimhood to survivor. And so Lynn Witten started to live. She started to dance and explore new ways of dressing. She determined that she would do all the things that she'd shied away from in years past. Finally, she could allow herself to be beautiful. It's one of those memories I've, I've got imprinted in my mind. It was about 10 years later. Um, and we made arrangements to meet. She came through the top entrance and I came through the bottom entrance. And as I walked up, I saw her coming down. And my immediate instinct was to turn around and run away. She had changed so much. She was gorgeous. The most amazing things about being involved with Quentin is that I felt beautiful. I still have that feeling of the day when I met her at the waterfront. That wow. And suddenly at that point, it was just the timing which is absolutely perfect to just to be loved again. And, and this time was so, so different because I think the first time I was loved, I didn't love myself enough to be to accept the love. And that, and that and it was hard to, to, to have to accept that it was me. And, but this time, I knew what I wanted. I knew what I deserved. I knew, I knew what, the, what the upside and the downside was. I also knew that the hurt could be huge but I was willing to take a risk. I think her leap of faith was um, taking a risk and getting involved with Quentin, her now husband, because that for me is really significant that she was able to trust another human being, trust another man, that they were going to be compassionate, that they would have her interests at heart and they wouldn't be cruel and abusive. I think that's a major leap for any woman who's been sexually abused. With Quentin, Lynn and Stephanie had happy and secure lives. And soon there was an addition to the family. Jessica was born. Two girls in a safe and loving environment. Lynn had provided her girls with something she'd never known, and the cycle had been broken. Lynn knew that there were still things that she needed to resolve in her past. She went to the police station and gave an affidavit detailing the years of abuse and its impact on her. For the first time, Quentin came face to face with the full details of what had happened to her. For many years, I'd, I'd taken her experience and put it under the blanket of abuse, which was fine, I could deal with it. But knowing the actual extent, the duration and the specifics of what happened to her, I would have liked to gone back and protect her. And my feelings were of anger, possibly towards myself as well, um, of not being able to do anything. Um, but also anger, extreme anger towards the perpetrator. It's incredibly hard for him in our relationship because when things happen, I pull back and I go into myself. Because even though it's years later and you've left the environment that was abusive, it stays with us. It will always stay with me. And it's still with you now. It will always stay with me. And the first thing that went through my mind was, you know, this is my wife. Um, and I, something happened that evening. I picked up my car keys and I, I think the, the rage turned into a very quiet space for me. Everything went still and I knew what I had to do. I walked out, I was busy walking out the house and I was gonna do something pretty awful. Something was completely out of character for me. I found a good friend of mine and I said, I'm gonna do something really irresponsible. And his first words to me was, where are you? I'll be there in two minutes.